We're bringing the taste of South America to your table with a refreshing ceviche. Coming up next on The Taste of Caribe Royale. Traditional and true ceviche comes from Peru. Normally the seafood or shrimp that we're gonna be using is cooked in the actual acids of the citrus, either lemon, lime, or oranges. But we need to do a step before that. We're gonna actually poach our seafood for about 20 to 30 seconds. This will allow the seafood to get slightly firm so it has more texture. We are gonna start by bringing a pot of water to a boil. And then we're gonna season our water, kosher salt, a little bit of white pepper, and then some Florida Bay seasoning or Old Bay seasoning. It really depends on what your preference is. I like this part mainly because it adds flavor to our shrimp. So I'm gonna place the strainer or spider over the top so it doesn't splatter on me when I lay the product in. And we're just gonna lightly place it. And all it takes is 20 to 30 seconds. We're gonna remove the shrimp and place it in a pan. We're gonna place this in the refrigerator. Tip, do not put it in ice water. Water leaches out all flavors. So we wanna make sure that we're cooling this down in the refrigerator and allow all that flavor that we poached the shrimp in to stay in the shrimp. Again, that'll help us build our flavors throughout the ceviche. So now that our shrimp is in the cooler, we're gonna start by dicing some of our vegetables that are needed. A fresh European cucumber. Again, less seeds, less water. We're going to remove our seeds. So I cut the cucumber in half, I cut it in quarters, and then I stand it up on its edge and slice the seeds out of it. So we'll do that and we'll dice our cucumbers. I always practice this, I call it the crab grip, where I grab the outer side, so I'm pinching the product with my fingers and I'm curling my fingers over, and then the knife rubs against my knuckles. So this way I can continue to cut and I always know where the knife is. Now we're gonna move on to our tomato. These are nice, beautiful vine-ripe tomatoes. So I cut the tomato. So the cool thing is Mother Nature gave us a nice little line to follow when we cut it. I actually push down on the knife and then follow it right along that line. By doing that, I remove the core. And then we'll dice the tomatoes exactly the same size as the cucumbers. Now that our tomato is diced, we're gonna move on to our red onion. Now when it comes to the onion, I normally, again, the claw grip, right? To my two fingers, I curl and I slice down. I spin it around, I cut the other side. I don't peel it from this stage. I cut the onion in half first, and then I peel the onion. Makes it a lot easier to manage and to use. Again, Mother Nature is incredible. If you follow the curvature of the onion with your knife, you'll only need two steps. So right, and the knife is angled, Mother Nature already cut it for us one way, so all we have to do is turn it, grab our pinchers, our fingers, and grab it back. Now we got a beautiful dice. So I pulled our shrimp out of the cooler. You can see it appears raw, which it is. It's still very much like medium rare on a steak, but yet the shrimp still is a little bit raw. It'll absorb that acid that we put in there with our lemon, lime, and orange juice that we're gonna add to it. I diced some fresh jalapenos. You always wanna make sure you're tasting the jalapeno It'll also aid in how much you want to put in. If you want it spicy or not too spicy. You do that a couple times, you'll figure it out. <laughs> and then I have some beautiful pineapple for our garnish that we're gonna put on top and a little twist. So that's what we do here at the Caribe. So now we're gonna assemble. You see a lot of liquid in the bottom of our tomatoes. Try not to get that in there. Again, the less liquid, the better. We really want our liquid to have that citrus, the lemon, the lime, and the oranges. And our fresh cilantro we're adding as well. Cilantro comes in very, very sandy, so make sure you're washing your cilantro before you're chopping. We're gonna add a little bit of our salt, some of our white pepper. Black can be used if you prefer, or even red chili flakes would be great if you really want to kick it up. So now that we've got all of our ingredients mixed in, we're gonna be adding our citrus, our orange juice, lemon juice, and lime juice. So before we add our avocado, we always add this right before it goes out to the guest. Couple tips with the avocado when choosing them at the store. Never grab it and squeeze it. All you're doing is damaging and bruising the inside of the avocado. The thickest part is actually the first one and a half inches down. So if I come and check, I push my finger, and if it pushes in and gets a little soft, I know the avocado is perfectly ripe. So now when I cut it, 
I hold the avocado in my hand, but if you're uncomfortable with that, you can place that on the board and work it so you're safer. Me, I've always learned, roll it in my hand, tip the heel of the knife, spin it, and then you're twisting. Beautiful avocado to get the seed out. A quick with the knife. Now to get that off, just push the knife down to extract the seed. Switch. Cut the avocado into quarters, and then I peel the skin off of it. Watch, this is pretty cool. So now I just peel the skin off of the avocado. We want to make sure that these cuts and our dice is a lot larger. A small dice like we did with the tomato or the cucumber, as we toss the avocado in that acid, right, the oranges and lemons and limes, it will dissolve. So we want to make sure this cut is a little bigger. So a couple of unique ways to plate this dish up is coconuts. You can get the coconuts at your local supermarket. Normally the coconuts come in hairy, very difficult to work with. What you want to do is you want to burn that. So if you have a gas stove or barbecue grill or a blowtorch, you'll burn all of those hair off and it'll look, kind of look like this. Then I wash it under cold water. So now we have a nice burned coconut. Actually kind of feels like my face, it's kind of whiskery. But now the hair won't get into our food. So to crack the coconut, you're gonna hold it in your hand. You're gonna use the heel of your knife. We're continuing to crack, and you'll hear it once it goes. Ah, hear that? Maybe a little messy, but well worth it. Now we have beautiful coconut to place our ceviche in. Now we do need something that's gonna keep it from rolling around. So I'm gonna place it in a vessel, like we do here, Karib, and then I'm going to place my beautiful ceviche inside the coconut. I like to stack it up a little bit, and then I like to drizzle the juice all on top. And if you don't want to crack the coconut, you can always just go for a great margarita glass or martini glass. Looks beautiful as well. I like to add a little fresh pineapple to the top of it. Now, if you wanted to do some roasted pineapple or grill it, even better. Again, it adds a different level of flavor. And just to add a little bit of fun, take the pineapple tops, because of course nothing goes to waste in the kitchens. You know, we add a little bit of tropical flair to it. And look like a little bird of paradise. And for here, we like to sprinkle with our chips. And there you have it, our South American ceviche. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the CaribRoyale.com. You can get the recipes and all we have to offer in your next vacation. We'll see you next time on Taste the Carib Royale.